Hey everybody, Mr. MathBlog here, and this lesson is solving linear systems by graphing. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. Let me show you that site real quick. You would get to this site right here, and, and our class is in Integrated Math 1. So if you click Integrated Math 1, it takes you to all the links, and I'm going to load this right down below Module 10.2, the last one that we did in, in uh, the last chapter right there. Okay, let's get started here. So a system of linear equations consists of two or more uh, linear equations that have the same variables. A uh, consistent and independent system has exactly one solution where the two lines, they intersect each other. And so that intersection point is uh, their solution. So if they intersect in one spot, they're called consistent and independent. Okay, they're consistent and, and dependent if it's the same line. So if, uh, say I did one in uh, blue right here, and then I did another one in red right here, and it landed right on top, blue and red makes that purple right there. So it would have, that would be a solution, that would be a solution. In fact, all these points right here would be a solution to both equations when we graph it. So we'd say there are infinitely many solutions. And so when that happens, it's called independent, or I'm sorry, it's called uh, consistent and dependent, okay? And then an inconsistent, uh, an inconsistent system <laughs> uh, is just parallel lines, you guys. They don't have a solution. They don't ever intersect. Okay, don't worry too much about that, you guys. I don't emphasize that as much in class, but I do want you to be able to graph, you guys. So let's go ahead and solve the system of linear equations by graphing and then check our answers. So here we go. We're going to graph both of these equations right here. So we're going to go ahead and find the intercepts of each one. Okay, when, when we get the intercepts, you guys, the x-intercept, you pretend like that y is not there. So 2 goes into 6 3 times, so the x-intercept's 3. And for the y-intercept, you pretend like the x isn't there, and you get y equals 6. Similarly, when the x-intercept over here... Uh, pretend like the y is not there, negative x equals 3, so x equals negative 3. Anyways, and then we get uh, the y-intercept to be positive 3. So I'm going to do this one in red, uh, graph these intercepts and graph these intercepts in blue. Okay, there they are right there. Okay, and then we'll connect up the blue guys, we'll connect up the red guys. So there they are right there, and then where they intersect is going to be our solution. So it looks like they're intersecting right there over 1 up 4 so that's going to be our solution and don't forget it says check our answer so let's go ahead and plug in x equals 1 y equals 4 into both equations right here so 2 times 1 is 2 plus 4 is 6 so that checks out right here and then when we plug in negative um, or we plug in 1 right here it becomes negative 1 because of that negative so Here's negative 1 plus 4. That also equals 3. So it checks out. That's a solution to both equations. So the point satisfies both of them. So 1, 4 is the solution to that system right there. Okay, let's try this one here. So here we're going to go ahead and graph. Uh, we'll graph this guy right here. This is called uh, the slope-intercept form. So we graph this y-intercept right there, negative 2. Then we use this slope, which is 2 over 1. 2 over 1 means we're going to go up 2 over 1. So we go up 2 over 1 and make another point. And then we'll go ahead and connect those guys. And then this guy will do the intercept method on that. That's pretty easy to do the intercept. So when the x-intercept, pretend like the 3y is not there. 6 goes into 18 3 times. And the y-intercept, you pretend like the x isn't there. So 3 goes into 18 6 times. So there they are right there. And then there they are. So uh, the y-intercepts up there at six, the x-intercepts right there at three. Connect those guys up, and then it looks like they're intersecting right there at two two. Okay, so let's check you guys. So let's make sure two two works in both, and it does. So the solution to this system is two two. All right, let's try this guy right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph uh, the first one. And so what I did is I here's the intercept right here, and the slope is up two over two. And these are going by twos right here. And notice this is negative two, negative four, negative six, negative eight. So when we graph this negative two, it's one tick mark down. There's negative two, and then we go up two over one because of the slope. The slope is two. Okay, this one's easy to get the intercepts, the x-intercept, when that's not there, negative 2 goes into 4, uh, negative 2 times, and then when the x isn't there, the y-intercept is up there at 4. Looks like they're going to be parallel. When you graph those guys, those are parallel, so we say no solution. Okay, 
All right, so let's do this guy right here, okay? So the x-intercept, so 2 goes into negative 4, negative 2 times, and similarly y equals negative 2. And then we'll graph the other line also right there. That's the top one right there. So let's graph, let's graph this guy in blue right here. And look at this, you guys. We go to negative 2, and then the slope is down 1 to the uh, right 1 because the slope is negative 1. So negative 1 is the same as negative 1 over 1. So we go to negative 2, down 1, over 1, and when we connect it up, it's going to be a blue line on top of a red line. It's going to give us a purple line. So that one's going to give us infinitely many solutions. All right, let's remember, you guys, if they intersect in one spot, they are called consistent and independent. If they don't intersect, they are called inconsist inconsistent. And when they lay on top of each other, uh, they're called consistent and dependent. And there's another word that your book calls that, and I'm not going to worry about it too much, you guys. Uh, all right, so let's estimate the solution of the linear system by graphing, okay? So we're going to go ahead and um, uh, graph. So what I did right here is I just went plus 2y plus 2y to both sides, and I get this right here. Then we can do our intercepts. 3 goes into 6 twice, 2 goes into 6 um, three times. Notice this is going by twos again, so so the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts, so uh, the x-intercept is two, the y-intercept is three, so when we do three, we go up a square and a half, because each square is two. Okay, here's two zero, so when we connect that, there's that line right there, and then y equals 4x plus 8, well, we can do the plus 8, and then since the slope is up 4 over 1, you can... You can continue and go, uh, there's up 2, there's up 4, and then just go over half a square. Or you can recognize that 4 over 1 is the same as negative 4 over negative 1. So we can go down 4 and then to the left 1, and I'll do that. So go down 4, so there's 2, there's 4 to the left 1. So right about there, we'll put a point right there. Okay, and then we'll connect them up, and then we're going to estimate where is that point right there. It's kind of in the middle. I'm kind of thinking... I don't know what, negative 1 and then 2, 4, about, I don't know, maybe 5. Well, the book says 4.5 is a guess, so we're going to say about negative 1, 4.5. And if you said negative 1, 5, that would be good, you know, or a little bit more. But somewhere you just got to do a little bit of estimating on that, you guys, okay? All right, if you're in my class, I would assign you guys that. Take care, you guys.